Hey, my name is Caleb Brackney. I'm a grad student at the University of Tennessee studying architecture and landscape architecture, and this is my schoolie. Welcome. This video is sponsored by Bioptimizers. Go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Florp to get a 10% discount using code Florp10 at checkout. And remember to subscribe. So I was an interior design major in undergrad, and I've always wanted to work on a project that I could really test out my skills. I was introduced to the tiny house community through one of my mentors who built a tiny house in Austin, Texas. Really just became inspired and thought this would be a perfect project for me to do going into architecture school. I had resources, scrap materials, and saved up some money, and essentially wanted to build my own tiny house. But then just looking at the finances, I could get a school bus for $3,000 versus an old camp to fix up for double or triple that at least. Worked through sketching and then brought it into Revit, which is a drafting program. And then from there, built a bus. I had a $10,000 budget, which included buying the bus and the conversion process. And my timeline was six months because my lease was ending August 1st and I decided to do this in February. Gutting was a nightmare. I was trying to drill out it seemed like a thousand rivets of the interior sheet metal ripping out the seats. Another challenge was staying in budget because you know, every time you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, it's easy to walk out spending hundreds of dollars. I was able to stay within the budget thanks to Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and dumpsters around Knoxville <laughs> where I would just get scrap materials and turned out, I think, pretty well. So this is a 1995 Thomas International School Bus I bought off Facebook Marketplace in Rome, Georgia. Getting it in Georgia, I didn't have to worry about rust issues. The paint job is just rolled and brushed on. I didn't want to have to buy a paint sprayer or worry about spray going everywhere. Uh, one of the most iconic pieces is the Romer sign, and so that was actually scrap metal that I found at school. Being a grad student, I'm able to use different tools, and so that was a water jet cutter I actually used to program the file and cut that out. So that's a cool little feature. Along the top, I've got some 12 volt lights I just used as marker lights and also to give me a little bit of light if I'm working around the bus. This is my inlet for my electrical line. So this is a 50 amp cord. A huge feature I loved about this bus was the side emergency door. I'm able to open it up, let my dog jump in and out or just let cross ventilation through. My water inlet right here. So when I fill up my 50 gallon fresh water tank inside, that's where it runs into. An exterior outlet right here that's tapped into the batteries. That way if I'm using tools or need to plug something in outside, I can use that. Here have a homemade ladder. We bolted this together up to the rooftop deck. And the rooftop deck also is an old mowing utility trailer. Took an angle grinder, cut off the axle, bolted it right to the roof of the bus, and have not had any leaking or any issues like that. There's the AC unit there on the top in the middle. 15,000 BTU Dometic unit. And that was one of the most expensive pieces of the whole bus build. I didn't want to have to deal with really bad humidity or heat inside the bus. As we continue to work our way around, I have another water jet sign I made. And that piece of scrap had that cut angle like that, so it worked out kind of perfect. So during the summer, I'll put plants in here. It's just an old pallet that I stained. I also have a tow package right here. I bolted onto the frame of the bus, tinted all the windows, just static clean tint I bought on Amazon. And it used to be one of the folding doors, which didn't feel as safe to me, especially having a dog inside. I put a strip of steel on the inside and outside. I kept the original bus hinges and then put on just a normal uh, locking door. Well, welcome to the Romer bus. Up here in the cockpit, I have a little bookshelf here for some books from school. Since the light housing is up on either side, just have storage and then additional food storage and mixers and stuff up there. I have the Jackery, which I use all the time. I have also have a couple solar panels I can put up on the roof to charge that if I need to. As far as the countertops, of course it's butcher block, but they're actually old semi truck beds. So I got all of the countertops in here for like 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. They just came in one foot strips and I had to plane them, stain them, sand them, but ended up being a really affordable way to have a durable countertop. I have my old college dorm room fridge. I just painted the same color. Old sink I found on Facebook Marketplace and then more, you know, just food storage up top. Um, have microwave, convection oven right here. Have a air fryer, Instant Pot down here. Then just with a couple pans I use basically every day. Then in this cabinet, I've got my 
kind of cooktop, stovetop, so I can just plug it in right here and use this whenever I'm cooking chicken or eggs or sauteing vegetables. These lights I picked up for a couple dollars like at Walmart and just really added some nice like accent lighting. One of my favorite features of the whole build is this clear story skylight. So I'm 6'2 and I can't, as you can tell, stand throughout the bus unless it's like right here. And it's really the main area that I walk in throughout the bus. So I raised it, I think nine inches, just cut it out with an angle grinder, took one inch steel tubing and basically framed around it. And then this is just acrylic, individually stained each of these strips, which is just quarter inch plywood. In the dining room area, I wanted it you know, to feel like the same space, but also to have some elements that made it special. So I inlaid some tile into the floor. So this is just LVT floor tile. Use the Dremel to cut into it to drop these tiles. Of course, have storage up above, have the mason jar storage below where I just screwed in the top of the mason jars into the shelf. These are just outdoor string lights that I drilled through this shelf. And then every other one of these has to stay empty because it you know, gets warm in there because of the light. And I can use that as my drinking glasses. I've got a pull-out keyboard, which is really nice, especially if I'm you know, just sitting here wanting to play piano or trying to procrastinate from homework. And then up on top of this, is really a special piece to me. When I was an undergrad, my last year I lived with five friends and everyone who came over to our house would sign this wall we had there. And so all these names are people who I spent time with that year. Of course, this isn't the whole wall, but it's a piece of it. So it's cool to be able to, you know, peel that back and just look at some of these names and, you know, think about people that I used to spend a lot of time with. All the windows, I chose to put blinds, learned how to sew, which, you know, sewing may have been the worst part of the whole build. It's just so time consuming and takes so much more patience than I want. <laughs> On this side, I have my closet. I used a CNC router, custom made each of these doors. Wanted to make sure I had a lot of closet space. Underneath, I've got shoe storage, just in baskets. And then over here, I've got my fuse box with the breakers in it. Um, and then my inverter is back behind it. I have a USB chargers um, in there also, so I can charge my phone that way. I just have the two stock bus batteries and the inverter runs everything through those two batteries. I've run everything when I'm driving from the AC unit and it's worked out fine. The sectional couch that pulls out. So it's easy to you know, turn the cushions, stack the back ones up on this side to where if people want to stay over and have a TV right here um, that swivels so from the front or the back I can watch it. I have surround sound also so I have a 12 inch sub underneath this couch and then on either side I've got speakers. And I have a 50 gallon fresh water tank underneath this bed. A feature that people ask me about all the time is this light feature up here. And so it's not copper, it's actually just PVC pipe I spray painted. These are just outdoor string lights, so exactly like these. Right here there's a socket that I just unscrewed the light bulb and just had every other one. And then above the bed I have a moonlight. It has a cover on the top I can lock, so in the mornings I can close it and not get woken up. <laughs> For the headboard, this is just quarter inch plywood that I made into these um, doors. And each of them have a different depth. And then I just have 12 volt lights that are just kind of taped around those. Everything in here is also run through Alexa, so as far as the TV or the lights. And it really just makes it easy if I'm laying in bed, I don't have to get up to do that stuff. As we move to the back, um, have the toilet right here with uh, the black water tank is right underneath it. I think it's a 25 gallon tank. This is just a foot pedal flush and it's worked really nicely. So around the corner is the shower, but it's you're not gonna see it today because it's just full of storage right now. If you wanna see the dimensions or how I plumbed it uh, or at an elevation view, you can go to Etsy at Romerbus and in the Romerbus plans, all that information is there for you. I think some of the biggest lessons and takeaways I have from the bus conversion are one, uh, do the tough things first because you have the most energy when you first start out with, you're really excited and passionate about it and you kind of just need to ride that out. So I did, for example, like window tinting very first thing because I knew I was not gonna feel like doing that if I waited till the end. Also using other people's enthusiasm for the project to kind of carry you through the weeks or months that you start losing interest in it is a really big um, way to just stay motivated and to work on it. You know, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of uh, energy and passion, 
but it's not you know a process that you can't learn it's not something that you know you aren't ever able to completely finish just because of the resources that are out there you know, i don't know how to do plumbing and all these things right now but just being willing to learn people really will gather around you and support you when you're passionate about something and so don't underestimate the power you have to affect and inspire other people and you know you're not going to be a master at whatever you're doing most likely but with youtube and different resources out there it's incredible what you can do with support from family and friends and really just in, in, enjoy that just start as soon as you can because when you have the idea you're never going to necessarily get more energy so just build on that momentum you have and then don't stop life gets busy we're never going to be younger we're never going to have more energy probably and so use your health that you have now the energy you have and just go for it that's what i'm trying to do and trying to continue to do what is the number one mineral that helps you beat stress fatigue and helps you get better sleep it's magnesium but it's not just any magnesium this is magnesium breakthrough from bioptimizers and it blends the seven essential forms of magnesium into one complete effective supplement that helps you relax more stress less sleep better and just generally helps you experience more peace throughout your day and most magnesium supplements fail because they are synthetic or they use preservatives but when you get all seven essential forms forms of magnesium, you get a serious upgrade from your brain to your body, your sleep, your pain and inflammation, and your muscle tension will go down. And so with this one simple step, you can reduce magnesium deficiency in all of its forms. And I'm almost finished with this bottle of magnesium breakthrough, and I can feel the difference in my sleep when I do take it. So go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Florb and use offer code Florb10 to get a 10% discount or you can click the link in the description or the pinned comment and you can get a 10% discount when you use offer code FLORB10. So thank you for watching and have a great week.